Today we're going to be covering subnet 36 Autopia because it has strictly no business being at 0.004 Tau per alpha token. Their revenue model is literally insane. What they're building is very important to people and companies. We are going to see what that subnet is. Is it bogus? Is it worth buying? Are you late to the party? Am I buying it? These are the things we're going to be covering. This series is designed for you to understand subnets and when you head on over to Tau stats and you see all these different subnets it is for you to watch these videos and develop your own investor mindset your own gut feeling for you to have a game plan on how to invest but first you need to understand what you're invested in what's in it for you is the subnet going to sustain the alpha token are you late are you not is this subnet hype things of that nature so let's get right into it so very simply put, Autopia aims to build the next generation of autonomous companies through the work of the miners that are building the AI agents at the moment. But they're much more complex than simple automations that you see in various companies that use Zapier or NN8. These AI workers that are built by the miners with real AI logic can reason like humans, act like humans, adapt to change, uh, understand if a website changes or if there's a bug or if there's a pop-up or if there's an interface adapt to dynamic user interface changes and ultimately they need to execute various tasks across different platforms without the need of APIs so it's much more than a straightforward automations it's literally they're trying to build an AI worker as a human which is ultimately going to save billions of dollars for companies. So I can already see from a quick glance point of view that companies are going to salivate for that kind of product if they really make it through and the miners provide good data to the subnet. So in short, these AI workers that are built by the subnet 36 miners are like digital employees. You would have an AI agent worker for a CRM. All these digital employees could reason, act, and browse online just as a human would. So imagine this AI worker being a whole secretary for a mid-sized business. Right off the bat, you're saving maybe $100,000 per year for that business. This is huge. And what I really love about Subnet 36 vision with AI worker is that they plan to build them through the miners without needing supervision. So like I said, it's much, much more than a simple automations. They can adapt to change, which is actually the biggest gap between a simple automation that you see on all kinds of platforms that people are paid millions to integrate into companies. Now we can have something that naturally without you even being there gets smarter over time. This is literally insane. So at a first glance, I'm very impressed with the narrative because I think automations are here to stay. There's a lot of unoptimized companies that would love this kind of product that Subnet 36 is offering. There's people making millions of dollars per year with traditional automations. And the only thing they implement into that company is if X happens, do Y. And you know, if X doesn't appear, the workflow just breaks. But with Autopia's vision and the AI agents they're trying to build, it's going to be much more like an autonomous team of AI agents that forms an autonomous company and the manager of these AI workers that is most likely going to be a human just monitoring them would say, here's what needs to be done most likely with a detailed prompt and the AI agent team, which is like at this point an autonomous company would implement its own intelligence into that prompt and actually do the work without the human being there and just worrying every time that something changes that it would might break. Obviously it's much more easier said than done for this to work and them to have an intelligence like I just mentioned, these AI agents must understand the whole world wide web at a deeper level with real human like intelligence. Why? Because it's on the web that you have most SaaS platforms, you have CRM systems, email projects, management, e-commerce stores, support tickets, all kinds of moving things that an agent must understand. So you can directly see that the miners have a lot of work to do into optimizing the agent code, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, checking the areas where the agent code breaks for them to actually feed that to the subnet and get proper emissions. So it's no easy task for the miners, but last time I checked, Ridges had a similar type of narrative where it was a winner takes all incentive mechanism for the miners. So in my opinion, this is a perfect breeding ground to bring in the most amount of intelligence into that subnet, similar to Ridges. 
and then we would have the snowball effect of all these miners competing against each other to make the best agentic workflow that doesn't break, that responds to the most validator tasks that are given to the miner, that interacts on all types of websites in the best manner possible and it doesn't break and it learns on its own and it understands the concepts and it understands the prompts that the you know the company people would tell the agents to do and the whole workflow wouldn't break at the first slight difference or a little latency bug or you know a pop-up that appears these are all very important things to actually save money for companies we're almost in 2030 anybody can integrate a simple two-step automation with all kinds of free platforms so the value must be much greater right now to actually get a slice of these companies profits via automations like subnet 36 is trying to do i can already see all kinds of narratives flying across crypto twitter oh atopia built this agent that scored this percentage on their synthetic benchmark atopia integrated 14 agents across this company and saved them two million dollars per year atopia saves people 40 hours per week on average these are the types of narratives that get retail rampant and get them to buy the alpha token and that's what matters for us we need to be ahead of the curve and we need to be ahead of the competition especially before the halving we need to have our bags ready and loaded so until now i am super impressed with the narrative I love it. The revenue model seems easy to pitch. This is very important for me because the subnet needs to bring in real revenue into the subnet, either to buy back alpha or just to prove that it's sustainable. At the end of the day, we don't want to back hold a token that slowly bleeds by what miners are dumping every day. Their website, because it is simply insane, I think their website blows out of the water most subnets and ultimately explain their newest invention, which is called the Infinite Web Arena, which is like a synthetic benchmark for miners, similar to ridges with the success percentages that you were seeing a few months ago. So what is the IWA benchmark? It's basically an ever-evolving and scalable benchmark designed to test autonomous agents under conditions that mirror the infinite complexity of the real web. So it's basically a giant ever-changing test ground for web automations that the miners are building. These tasks are dynamic, generated by synthetic data and AI, so miners cannot actually memorize you know, the work that they've done previously to submit new agentic workflows and just get fake emissions. This is designed to prevent gaming of the incentive mechanism. So IWA continuously generates new websites, new layouts, new tasks, new buttons, new pop-ups, just like a real world trafficked website. And the more tasks on these demo websites that a miner succeeds on, so the miner and his AI have to adapt and reason and not just follow a past script or some static benchmarks like before. This makes me much more confident because I genuinely see a honest path to building the best possible web agents of the future. So for example, on a demo website on test run one, the button can be on the top left and it would say buy now. And on the second run, it can be a completely different button with a different word and having a different function in it. And the agent must understand that. So personally, I think this is a much better way to prove how good your agent actually is. And this synthetic benchmark really helps with that. So if you want to understand their latest Dynamic Zero update, and I highly suggest read this article right here. It explains a lot of very interesting things and you're going to really get the grasp of why these agents have a lot of talent. The miners have been submitting static tasks that didn't really represent the real web, which is more messy. And they figured out that the data that they were giving to the subnet wasn't good enough. And this is where everything changes with Dynamic Zero. It brings four massive changes to the web and the submittings that the miners would have to do for their agents that all increase in task difficulty and website complexity scored between D1 and D4. Right now with Dynamic Zero, they've changed the incentive mechanism to winner takes all. So you can see this as only the most competitive miners will earn the emissions of that subnet. And you can directly see how Ridges is focused on building the best software engineer that helps you. Now, Topia is building the best web agent that is going to help self-employed people and companies throughout the world to save them time and money. Ridges had a huge success, so I do not see why Autopia won't have a successful alpha price as well, but obviously none of this is financial advice.
And this right here is an example of the dashboard, you know, a miner could see or even a staker. You have the top score right here, how many websites that agent performed tasks on. There's still demo website at the moment, we're very early. You also see how many miners are currently competing for the emission run currently, how many validators are scoring them. And right here, you see the percentage accuracy on the task given to those agents. You see the different kinds of agents and their best agent is called Automata. Their agents will most likely be open Open source just like ridges you have 30 different websites that all vary in complexity and this is the place where you have the difficulty as you see the use cases that need to be succeeded by the miners and their agents and you have various websites ranging from movie databases bookstores linkedin amazon airbnb crm gmails open table things of that nature right here you can benchmark your agent for absolutely free and you're going to get scored and see where it fails where it doesn't on a given task it either says success true or success false to give insights to the developer and for him to optimize his agent so this right here was a quick rundown of the infinite web arena platform their website is still in development right now we're super early but i see this as a good thing because we get to buy the alpha token at a lower price so if you click right here on autopia studio this is where the users would be actually able to deploy these different ai workers inside the dashboard that looks something like this on the right side so you could have integrated workers for slack discord all types of websites so you can directly see that through this dashboard you would probably have thousands of apps that would be able to easily integrate with the Autopia's agents for a fee. In simple terms, this is where humans orchestrate AI workers, they build and deploy any type of AI workers. So the use cases are crazy. You could have an AI agent that is an email worker. You can have an AI agent that is a CRM worker. You can have another one that is fine-tuned for web agent working and etc. Again, in this dashboard, you could probably deploy another agent that is more focused on qualifying the leads things of that nature. So from a first point of view, if I was a user of this dashboard, I would definitely see myself saving a lot of time, money, employee resources, and things of that nature, making my life much more easier. And for the developers, it's also very cool. They have like an app store of web agents that you can deploy directly on their infrastructure. And you can probably charge royalty fees for your web agent that you deployed on Autopia's infrastructure. So the agent looks something like this, a bunch of lines of code. And as you can see, when the developer is on the publish stage of his web agent, he can deploy it on Autopia's marketplace. This is very similar to Schutz's marketplace as well of developers that deploy stuff there. And you would have an array of different web agents that the users could pick from and actually start using and paying per call. There is a marketplace of AI agents that are published by developers through the developer studio. There is a revenue sharing model via royalties or things of that nature that go back to the developer. And on the right side, we have the user that manages the AI agents via his user Autopia Studio. And everything is deployed on the Autopia infrastructure, so they take cuts for that as well. And there's a bunch of inference running with large language models as well. There's shoots inference that is connected with these agents as well. So it's a very nice mechanism and flow of revenue that I think has a lot of potential. So let me give you a real example when it comes to lead qualification. I was in real estate and this was a huge headache to figure out which lead was good, which lead wasn't, which lead was worth my time, who did I have to give energy to, who was a serious buyer or a seller. This would take hours out of my week and I definitely felt the pain. So imagine a company receiving 50 leads per day. According to Autopia's documentation, they would spend anywhere between 8 to 12 hours just to do repetitive, boring qualification work. The solution would be four AI agents all having their separate use cases for that lead qualification problem. You would have an agent which is an email worker. He would basically detect a new email and set up an automated workflow. This is pretty easy. Then you would have the web agent worker who would scrape all sorts of profiles and social medias then you would have the fine-tuned web agent use case and he would scrape all sorts of profiles company websites see the employees the ceo things of that nature to see if they're serious and if they actually qualify all autonomously without breaking which is pretty insane then you would have the specialized ai agent which is good with crms 
he would be able to place that lead into the CRM to make sure that, you know, that company doesn't forget him later on. And ultimately another email worker, which would send something personalized to try to close him as fast as possible, as cheaply as possible. So am I a buyer of subnet 36 drum roll? <laughs> yes. I freaking love this subnet. I think that their vision and the products that they're aiming to build through our miners really represents the pure ethos of competitiveness inside of the bit tensor ecosystem. Anytime you have a grandiose subnet that has an amazing vision, but it's pretty far from actual real world cash revenue, we need to be careful because miners have a lot of expenses when developing these powerful AI agents. So the miners are more likely to dump the alpha tokens and even the Tao tokens just to pay their expenses and we cannot blame them for that. Ridges is the hottest subnet right now and is still not bringing in any revenue. So I have a lot of faith in Autopia as well because the markets are usually forward thinking. They act on narratives and stories and potential. When everybody knows the information, when everybody knows the cash flows, the price to share earnings and things of that nature, the price is usually high. So you can't have it both ways. You cannot invest in low priced gems all while having no risk. It just doesn't work like that in nature and in markets. I personally love the vision. I think the alpha price has no business being that low. And even if I buy a little bit right now and it crashes, I don't see this crashing another 90% or just slowly bleeding out just because of the powerful narrative. This subnet can save a lot of money time, human resources, and increase people's profits. Whether you're self-employed, a small or medium business, or even a large corporation, you can use these types of automations. So with that being said, did you understand this subnet? Do you like it? Do you plan on buying it? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.